This is the Chefpreneur Podcast, where we inspire professional cooks to take on greater risk to build a personal chef business for themselves. Now, here's your host, Andres Hinojosa. Hey guys, thanks again for tuning in. This is Andres Hinojosa with the Chefpreneur Podcast. Thank you for joining me today. I'm really excited about today's episode. You know, I did a few surveys this last week and I wanted to share the results with you guys uh, because some of these results just really flabbergasted me, man. I was I was beside myself. They were not what I was expecting and I can't wait to share that with you guys. But first, I want to just thank you again for tuning in, all the downloads, all the support that I've been getting. Uh, We've been getting great feedback on the podcast and I'm really excited that you guys are really enjoying it and I hope that you guys are getting enough value out of it. Um, So keep listening, keep tuning in and make sure you subscribe to it because I'm uh, I just want to keep delivering value to you guys so Last week, we discussed setting up your business, where we discussed licensing, we discussed uh, liability insurance, things that you need for your business. And what was interesting was I wanted to kind of start to do surveys and polls for a lot of chefs and cooks out there and figure out what their biggest fears were when it came to actually starting their own personal chef business. Because there's a lot of fears around any business being started, right? A lot of people feel uh, that maybe they don't have what it takes or they're, they're scared about the business know-how of it. So what I did was I actually orchestrated a survey and a poll that I placed in a few several uh, Facebook chef groups. And I wanted to get the feedback to see what you guys are all afraid of out there. And I know that it's hard sometimes to discuss what those fears are and kind of what your what you feel your shortfallings are um, in public. But but with a survey, I feel like it made it more comfortable for people to just select an option and move on and feel like you know they don't have to be in the limelight or the spotlight. And because I know that you know it takes a little bit of courage to just admit what you feel that you're afraid of. And I know that that was the case with. With me because you always want to put on a front and feel like, you know what, you got this under control or, you know, I don't have any fears. I just, you know, and there's a lot of excuses or walls we can hide behind. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to try to start to break down those barriers and I wanted to open up communication with you guys and really dive in and see what you guys wanted to tell me and what you guys want to share with each other on what some of those fears are. So I had a very simple survey that I put out and basically I was asking the um, that if you want to start your own personal chef business, what are your biggest fears? Okay. And the options that I listed was that you won't be able to find clients or you don't have enough experience yet, or that you're not business savvy or that you don't have enough money. Now I'll be honest with you. This, the results completely blew me out of the water. I was not expecting what the results were going to be. So I, I personally thought that a lot of people had a fear of the business savviness that you need or feeling like you have to have business experience. And believe it or not, the number one thing that you guys said that you were afraid of was actually that you didn't have enough money to start your own business. Now, that was really interesting to me because to be very clear and very honest with you, to start a personal chef business, you do not need a lot of money. And what I mean by a majority of you is that there was over 517 of you that responded to this survey. So I first want to just say thank you so much. If you were part of those, that 517 people that responded to the survey, thank you so much for giving me your input and commenting on that. Because what this does is just tells me where you guys are at, where your head's at, what your thoughts are, and I want to try to help to debunk some of those myths that you guys might have in your head about starting a personal chef business. And I just thought it was very interesting. And what I mean by majority, when I talk about a majority, this was a big majority, okay? 58% of you out of 517 people who did the survey said your number one fear was that you didn't have enough money to start this business. Now, that was just really boggled my mind because believe it or not, and I kind of discussed it in the last episode, setting up your own personal chef business, there's not a lot of overhead that you need. So the investment amount of money that it really takes to invest into starting your own personal chef business is really, really low. In fact, it's one of the lowest that I can think of to actually start a personal chef business for yourself, okay? And today I wanted to kind of shed light not only on the survey and 
kind of dissect a couple of the answers that I saw and even some of the comments that I saw in some of these uh, Facebook groups. But I also wanted to kind of even give you some numbers. And what I mean by numbers is some realistic numbers of what I really feel are the actual numbers that you need or the actual amount of money you need to start a business doing this for yourself, to start a personal chef business for yourself. So like I said, you guys uh, let me know that your biggest fear was not having enough money to start your own business. Now, when I was talking last week on the podcast about uh, getting liability insurance, to be honest with you, that is the number one cost you're going to associate with starting your own business because you need that liability insurance. And there's a lot of programs out there. The one that I like to use is Flip. Uh, it's a personal chef, um, uh, specifically for personal chefs, a liability insurance for personal chefs. And it's $299 for the entire year. So that's pretty inexpensive when you think about it. And you get great coverage for it. Now, I'm not a spokesperson, so I'll make the disclaimer. I'm not a spokesperson as of right now for Flip Insurance. But I will say that $299 is a great deal. And it's a pretty low-cost, effective way to cover yourself. That is your biggest expense. Now, every state, like I mentioned last episode, is going to have their own uh, business license fees and different things that you have to go through in your in your local area, you know, with your local city governments and state governments. But all in all, guys, I really only think that you need about five hundred dollars or less to start your own personal chef business. Now, what was interesting to me was that I don't know where that fear came from from a lot of you of thinking that you had to have a lot of money to invest. Um, but the licensing, the business uh, was was where you guys told me that you felt like you needed the most amount of money for. So I actually did a follow-up survey regarding after I had that first initial survey of all your guys' fears, I did a follow-up survey regarding what the actual specifics you think you need money for. And 75% of you said that you need money for the licensing and the liability insurance, and that was the money you needed. So maybe there was just misconceptions on how much those things actually cost. So like I said, you can definitely get into a liability insurance coverage for an entire year for $299. Now, in the last episode of the podcast, I also discussed getting a fictitious business name. Here in San Diego, you're going to pay about 42 bucks. That's where you can legally do business under that name. So that also can be put under kind of your licensing or your naming. Now, business licenses can range from, I don't know, probably $35 to $100, depending on your area. So really, I think those are the three main components you really need to actually get started. Now, if you really, again, if you wanted to dive into a becoming an LLC, there's going to be an additional cost for that too. But as well, most states are pretty reasonable when it comes to creating an LLC. So all in all, guys, I think you can really start your own personal chef business for $500 or less. Now, I think one of the stipulations that we all have, though, sometimes when we associate starting a business is that you need tons of capital to get started. And one of the things that I'm noticing that's a recurring type of thing is that when you're looking at starting a business, you don't necessarily, I mean, you don't necessarily have to start by just going gun ho and, you know, in investing tons of money in all this advertisement, right? You want to try to find some clients to get the word of mouth out to really get yourself, you know, in the game and just start finding your first client. Now, in the second survey that I asked, where I asked you guys specifically, what are the things you really think you need money for? One of those options was marketing and advertising. And believe it or not, that was actually the least thing that you guys voted you need money for. And I would honestly, I would also say that if you are going to spend money and you would think that it needs a lot of money, actually advertising would be the avenue that costs the most amount of money to actually, you know, put into your business. But you don't need to spend money on advertising when you first start. You just want to start to uh, find your first client. Now, uh, I'm not going to give you the how to's and all that because that's not what this episode's about. Uh, but I do have a, a kind of a, a system or a blueprint that I follow to actually get tons of referrals and tons of clients without spending any money in advertising and partnering up with the right people to do so. 
Okay. So for me, I, I have a system that I use that allows me to start to get a consistent flow of clients on a regular basis. And it's through partnerships. It's through partnering with people. But that's kind of covering the marketing aspect. The other thing that you also need to spend money on that I put into the survey was your branding, such as your website, your logos, certain things like that. Now, again, if you had somebody build a website and cost you anywhere from $300 to up to you know $5,000, I mean, there's people out there that do a great job, uh, and there's some very, very talented uh, website designers and developers that are fantastic, but a lot of them come at a hefty cost. And there's also the do-it-yourself way, so you can build your own website website on, on platforms such as Wix and Squarespace and Weebly. Um, there's, there's plenty of platforms now that you can build your entire website off of, but if you feel like you're not tech savvy, you're not going to be able to, to, to design it that well, you might feel a little frustrated and, and you know, conflicted. And, and, and so it, it could be kind of challenging for you. But again, in the survey, you guys only voted only 10% that you'd spend money on branding and 15% on advertising is what you guys, what the poll numbers told me. But 75% said that it was the business licenses and the insurance that you felt like you needed the money for. Now, $500 to invest in a business for yourself to get yourself into self-employment is a very, very, very small cost. Okay. Let me, let me just do some comparison for you. Now, I've talked about this in a previous episode where we're talking about different chefs who have special skills that open up very specific cuisine oriented restaurants or, you know, such as, you know, uh, Grant Adkins doing, you know, molecular gastronomy and things like that, right? Now, I want to just kind of give you guys a visual. I want you to stop and in your mind, I want to give you a visual, visual to see the price comparison of what starting your own business as a personal chef is, the cost compared that to starting your own restaurant, okay? Now, we all know that there's uh, faster and cheaper ways to get into a restaurant now more than ever, and they're called food trucks. So again, there's a level of investment that you still have to make for food trucks, but let me put them in this order for you. So if you wanted to start a restaurant, you're thinking about 50 to 100,000, 150,000, all the way up to a million dollars or more to invest in a restaurant. Let's be honest, right? You have not only the building, the location, the build out of your restaurant, but all the equipment that comes into it. I mean, recently I was discussing this with a few people and uh, they're in the restaurant business. I actually cooked for them as a personal chef and they're part of a restaurant group. And he was telling me it was super it was a super challenging for him to actually continue to make a profit in the restaurant that really they only make profit with alcohol and beverage sales. And he says it's because the cost of the overhead of the the staff and the actual restaurant, the lease of the restaurant or the space every single month is just horrendously huge. It's, it's an insane amount of money, right? And I was asking him, so he has, I think the group has several restaurants and I was asking, what's your average cost to build up a restaurant? He's like, honestly, between $750,000 to a million dollars. Now, these are some really nice restaurants, right? But even just installing a hood vent in a location that doesn't have a hood vent and you want to put a restaurant in, that's going to easily alone cost you fifty or $60,000, Okay. Now let's move on to the next, you know, kind of the next food business down, which would be like a food truck, right? Now a food truck is still going to come with an investment, but it's usually a lot smaller than a restaurant, but you're going to go out, you're going to find a food truck. I've seen them, you know, sometimes these older food trucks that are kind of beat up. I've seen them anywhere from 15 to $20,000 all the way up to a brand new one for 60, $65,000. Now, once you get the food truck, usually you have most of the equipment inside, but you'll probably have to, you know, get some equipment to put in the food truck and do some, you know, kind of some upgrades and different things like that. So all in all, you're looking at an investment of fifteen, twenty thousand dollars all the way up to sixty-five to even a hundred thousand dollars for a fantastic food truck. Now, that's still a lot less of a bill than a five hundred thousand, seven hundred fifty thousand, or a million dollar restaurant, right? Okay, but you're still needing to come up with Fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars minimum cash to start your food truck business, right? So think about that. Now, 
I don't know about you guys out there, but I don't have $30,000 just laying around to invest in a food truck. Again, it's a, it's a smaller price to pay than a restaurant to get into the business, but it's still an insane amount of money. Now, I wanted to paint that picture for you guys visually in your heads because when we start talking about 500 or 600 or max $1,000 to start a personal chef business, you are talking about pennies on the dollar in relation to starting a restaurant or starting even having a food truck, right? Now, think about that, guys. You can start your own business for literally a fraction of the, I mean, the price of a frying machine to a fryer in your restaurant is probably going to cost you more than a thousand dollars. Let's just be honest, right? So think about that. The entire business that you need to, the entire amount of money you need to invest in a business is less than a thousand dollars. That's literally a fraction of what it would take to go to a restaurant, you know, to go into the restaurant space or or starting your own kind of food truck business, right? And the reason why I'm pounding so hard on this is because when I got these survey results back, like I said, I was beside myself. I was thinking to myself, not have enough money. Now, I I would have expected that answer if we were talking about starting your own restaurant, but we were talking about starting your own personal chef business. Now, Here's the thing. I think a lot of misconceptions about just starting, like I said, your your any kind of business in general or to go from being employed to being self-employed and working for yourself, I feel that there's already a myth and a misconception that it's going to take a lot of money to do that. Now, I've already preached to you guys about starting a personal chef business, and I've kind of mentioned it to you guys before, about starting a business even as a side gig, even as a side hustle. Because when you're talking about a business that you can get into for $500 to $1,000, you can definitely work on that on the side. Let's, let's just paint, let's just do some basic math here. I want to I wanna break it down into some numbers because I want to make sure you guys are getting this today, right? If you invested $1,000 to start your own personal chef business, okay, and you go out and you cook for three clients at $350 each time you've cooked for them, which honestly is very easy to hit. I can, I can teach you how to hit those numbers and, and no offense, even more than $350 in one cooked night, right? But let's just say $350 minimum just to make it easy. Okay. Just to make, just to make the, the sake of the conversation and kind of make the equation. So three clients and you're already paid back a hundred percent of what your expenses were to start your business. Just three simple cook days or clients cooked for or served, and you already have your investment back in your hand. Now, imagine if you can buy a food truck and go and cook only three times, set up in a location, set up everything, prep all the food, get your staff, get everybody ready, and you do that just three times and you'll have your $60,000 back. There is no chance that that is happening. There is no chance that you're going to get a return on your investment in just three times that you're out there with the food truck. Now, even more so in a restaurant, that's like you opening for three nights. You're paying back your entire half a million or $300,000 investment in just three nights. Now, you, you might be thinking, well, you know, I could probably do some really good revenue numbers with a restaurant. Yeah, you probably can. If you had some sort of a nightclub where you're serving all types of drinks, you could probably get a $25,000 revenue. But how many people would you need to even get into your restaurant, right? Just to even get those $25,000 in revenue, not in profit, but in revenue, right? Which means that your sales, $25,000 in sales, you're probably spending another $10,000 just on advertising to get all those people there for the 25,000 plus the 25,000 is not profit. So then you have to you know, pay for your employees, pay for all your overhead, making sure you're buying your product. You're not going to make any money. So how are you going to pay that investment back in three nights? It's not possible. Now, here's the thing. In a personal chef business, I can go out, I can go cook for someone. In fact, this Saturday, I'm cooking for someone, right? It's a bachelorette party. There's eight of them. I'm going to make $900 to cook for eight ladies at a bachelorette party. Okay. Now I'm not saying this to brag. I'm just trying to give you a visual of what's going on. In one event that I'm doing this Saturday, I'm pretty much could pay if I would have started my own personal chef business, all the licensing, right? Because let's talk about it. The liability insurance was $299, my business. So let's just say even $500. 
I'm able to pay my, all my expenses my very first event that I even do. Now, tell me what other business can do that. Tell me what other business in the food industry can do that. I'm going to go out on a limb and say none. And that's what I wanted to kind of open you guys up to today is I wanted to kind of break those falsities you guys have, break those myths that you guys have in your head about needing all this money to start this business. You don't. And with my systems that I, that I teach, I definitely know that I can help you get clients that will pay you $500 for just one cook visit. And you'll be able to pay your entire investment back that you've put in, in literally probably your first or second event. That's insane, right? And this is what I'm trying to talk to you about. That's why I was so surprised when I saw these survey poll numbers come back. I was like, are you kidding me? This is crazy. And you know what? I'm not saying anything negative about what you guys are, are, are feeling like your biggest challenges or your biggest fear about starting your own business, because I get it. I had the same misconception myself when I first started my business that it was going to take all types of crazy amounts of money. But you know what? In this particular space as a personal chef, this is why I love this business. There's hardly any overhead, if any at all, and the reward can be huge. Now, am I saying that you're going to make a million dollars as a personal chef your first year or even a hundred thousand dollars your first year? I'm not saying that, but I am saying that the investment that you put in, the small investment that you put up to actually start this business, you will get that back in no time, probably within your first or second event. It's really that basic and that simple. So I've never really talked those numbers, obviously on the podcast yet. And I wanted to kind of bring those numbers into play because again, you guys were telling me, Hey, chef, I'm seeing that you guys are scared and you guys were telling me, Hey chef, I'm scared of feeling like I don't have enough money to start my own business. And I don't think that that could be further from the truth, right? Think about it. Your car payment probably costs anywhere from 200 to 350 bucks a month. And as little as two car payments, you have your business set up legally have an operating business. That's the amount of investment it takes. And that's very, very small in compared to a restaurant or a food truck. So, you know, I really wanted to kind of almost do a follow up from last week's podcast regarding setting up your business. And I'm really excited that you guys really spoke to us on this survey. And I'm really glad that you guys brought this to my attention, because honestly, I don't think I would have spoken to this, uh, this topic because that topic was not in my mind because I know it to be so false that you need a lot of money to start this business that it wasn't even in my radar. It wasn't on my radar that you guys were thinking that you need a lot of money to, to start this business. So I hope I was able to shed some light today. I hope I was able to debunk some of these myths and go against some of these false beliefs you guys have, because honestly, there's nothing more that I want than your guys' success. I want us chefs and cooks out there to be successful. I want us to take control of our own career, our own destiny, our own lives. And I want us to go from being employed and feeling like we're, you know, counting on someone else or some company to give us our paycheck. And I want us to create our own way. I want us to create our own wealth, right? And to be honest with you, that's what this whole podcast, that's what the whole Chefpreneur movement is about. And so I wanted to, to just as well remind you guys that we have an ebook, a free ebook that we're giving away right now. It's called the Chefpreneur ebook. And you can go to ebook.chefpreneurprogram.com. That's E B O O K dot chef, P R E N E U R program.com. If you go to that website, that URL, you can go ahead and download your free copy of the ebook today and make sure that you get it. Cause I'm not going to be giving it away for free forever. And so I want you guys to make sure you pick up the free copy of that ebook where it gives you a really, it's an ultimate guide of how to start your own personal chef business. We also have an amazing Facebook group that we just launched called the Chefpreneur movement. So if you go to Facebook and you search chef, the Chefpreneur movement, it's a group that I, that I started, that we started. It's 
It's completely 100% for free. And what we're doing is we're trying to get this discussion going and get more members in that group because I really want you guys to tell me what some of these false beliefs you guys have on starting your own business because I really do believe that this is the future. I believe that us chefs and cooks can take matters into our own hands and we can really take our career paths and put it into our own hands and be in the driver's seat for once in our career as opposed to depending on some company, hotel, or restaurant. So I want to guys encourage you, join the Facebook group, The Shepreneur Movement, download the free ebook, which is also going to be in the show notes. We're going to have a link for you to, to click on the link to download that as well. But I hope you guys sign up for the free ebook, get your copy today, as well as join the Shepreneur Movement group. So I can't wait to talk to you guys again next week on another another episode of The Shepreneur Podcast. So hope you guys have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Chefpreneur Podcast, where we want to educate, motivate, and inspire as many chefs to become their own boss. Please subscribe to the podcast and join us every week to be part of the movement. To sign up for our free online training, visit becomeashefpreneur.com.